Hey y'all, what's up? So I'm going to start off this video by saying, if you belong to Jesus, you have nothing to fear. But if you have rejected the free gift of salvation, this should scare you to your very core. Because believe me, knowing what the Lord showed me and the Lord added to a vision that I had had and linked some dots that I thought would never be linked is scary and the Lord really showed me how fast one-fourth of the fresh water will be poisoned one-fourth of the vegetation is gonna be burnt up and one-fourth of the people are gonna die after the rapture and how he's gonna use 169 volcanoes to do it So, we're going to get into this because I know that probably scared the living patootie out of you just hearing that. So, if you if you haven't seen my other videos, I highly suggest you go watch them because um, it may make more sense. But, hopefully, I can cover most of it and it will make sense without the other videos. So, I have had a vision about a year and a half ago. And, God has added to this vision. When he first gave me the vision, it was... The San Andreas, Yellowstone Super Volcano, and the new Majority Fault Line. And how these three would work together to set off other fault lines and volcanoes and destroy America within one hour. God had linked it to Revelation 17, 18, and 19, and how America is Great Mystery Babylon. And then the Holy Spirit showed me the circadian seduction zone. And I was led to be shown that the San Andreas and the circadian seduction zone are connected. And they are a two-in-one package. One goes off, the other will fall. These are major, huge fault lines that can cause some serious damage. Then the Holy Spirit led me to, there's not just one super volcano, there's three bedded within America. And they make a triangle, like a little pyramid. You have the New Mexico one, you have the California one that borders another state, and then you have the Yellowstone one. Crazy, right? And the Lord had shown me that there is 169 volcanoes bedded within America, and three of those are super. And the Lord had also given me a vision, and then a week later given me a dream of the exact same vision, which was a little bit like, whoa, and I was trying to figure out where this vision fit. And the dream vision actually fit in the vision that God had already given me. So New York being bombed. In the San Andreas, I feel like they're going to go off kind of at the same time or it's going to be one right after the other. That's a scary thing to think about. Now, who's going to bomb New York? I don't know. A lot of people think it'll be China. I have a feeling it could be Russia, but I could be totally wrong. But I've also been given Damascus. And I looked into Damascus. So... I have a feeling that maybe Damascus will go, will be a ruinous heap first. And I could be wrong, but just by reading Isaiah 17, the Holy Spirit showed me that when Damascus becomes a ruinous heap, it is a rejoice. A celebration for Israel. But that in that same day, the veil will be thinned for Jacob. And it talked about a bunch of other things. And I just got this picture of Jacob's trouble starting. And I was like, whoa. 
that is such a picture of so maybe Damascus will get bombed. This is my thing. Damascus will come over with a heat. Israel will rejoice in it. And that's when everybody's going to come against Israel. And that's when God's going to have to step in and annihilate the enemies of Israel. And that'll be when the San Andreas goes off and everything starts snowballing and World War Three starts, starts, the rapture happens, and everything just stops. That is my take on it, and I know that a lot of other people have gotten the same thing. So, in a way, I've kind of got confirmation on that. Could I be wrong on how everything plays out? Of course, I'm only human. I'm just putting the puzzle pieces that God has given me together. So, God had me looking into the volcanoes that are within America, and God had me look into what volcano, what volcanoes are capable of. So, just imagine that 169 volcanoes, three of those being super volcanoes, go off within one hour. Amos 8 says that the moon will be dark, or not the moon, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. Well, volcanoes make these dust clouds, and they can block out the sun, and they can block out the moon, making the sun dark and the moon not give its light. And a lot of people have seen three days of darkness. They've had dreams and visions of the three days of darkness, and I feel like that plays right into the first days of the tribulation and it fits right into the, the sun and the moon being blacked out. And I've also looked into something else of what volcanoes are capable of. Volcanoes are capable of making w fresh water poison. The Bible calls it wormwood, bitter, undrinkable water. And volcanoes, this should be obvious, volcanoes are capable of burning up vegetation and killing people with the lava. So, I'm getting this picture of Amos 8, the sun being darkened and the moon not giving its light. One-fourth of the water being warm wood, poisoned on bitter, undrinkable water. The one-fourth of the vegetation being burnt up. And after the rapture, one-fourth of the people who are left being dead. Being killed by the volcano. Just like the Bible says. And I know the Bible says it'll, it'll be within the first three and a half years. But the Bible really never pacifizes when in the first three and a half years that's going to be. But the volcano is starting to fit real perfectly and really good. The volcanoes are. <clears throat> the only thing I have not been able to figure out is how one-fourth of the, of the ocean turns to blood. That I have not figured out. I kind of have a theory, but I don't think it fits. And it's kind of gruesome. <laughs> um, so, I know that there are underwater volcanoes. And what if the underwater volcanoes go off? And what likes to hang out around volcanoes? Big sharks and lots of fish. Lots of sea life likes to hang around volcanoes underwater volcanoes. So what if the underwater volcano underwater volcanoes went off and the blood from the animals is what turns one fourth of the ocean into blood? That's a theory that I have, but I'm not quite sure if that fits. I'm still trying to figure that one out. But I got most of it. And the Holy Spirit has shown me most of what is going to come to pass and how it's going to come to pass. And it's just like and people want to sit here and gamble with their salvation. 
People want to sit here and say, it's okay, I can still become a tribulation saint. I can still give my life to the Lord after the rapture. It's okay if I gamble a little bit to see, to see if I'm going to, if the rapture is real. Do not play with your salvation. It is not something you want to do. And the Lord has just showed me that over and over again. Playing with your salvation is not something you want. Giving your life to Jesus now, while you're still in the age of grace, is um, honestly the perfect time to, to choose heaven or hell, life or death. Do you give your life to Jesus or do you reject his free gift? Do you believe what he did on that cross? Do you believe Jesus gave it all up, was born of the Virgin Mary, lived a sinless, perfect life and went to that cross and died and bore your sins and spilt your blood or spilt his blood for your sins, a debt you could never pay. The question is, are you going to take a chance and gamble with your salvation or are you going to to accept the free gift of salvation and believe that you are bought and paid for with the blood of Jesus that he died and shed on that cross. I hope you choose Jesus. I hope you don't gamble with your salvation. I hope you're not on that fence. I hope you're not lukewarm. I hope you're in camp, Jesus. I want to see you in heaven. I don't want to see you left behind. But the thing is, I warned you. Other people have warned you. And if you still want to gamble, you still want to play, then I'm sorry to say, but good luck in the seven years. Good luck after the rapture if you're going to gamble with your salvation. I've done my part. I've warned you. It's up to you to make your decision. No one can make your decision for you. Nobody can force you to choose Jesus or accept Jesus. Or, yeah, choose Jesus or reject Jesus. Wow. <laughs> um, I'm only human, y'all. Um, so, hope you make your choice. And I hope it's the right one. But if you choose to reject Jesus, I accept your decision because you have free will to make your own choice. I'm choosing Jesus. I hope you choose him too. All right, well, I'm going to get off here. I'm going to upload this video. I hope you guys have a great day and I will either see you in my next video or I'll see you in heaven. I'm rooting for heaven. All right, bye guys.